Tony kids, Dr. Freedom of Earth, times of Dr. News, news from in around the Hooniverse that may or may not freak you out as much as when, well, they announced Ruby Rose quit Batwoman this week. I'm like, I know that has nothing to do with Dr. News, but like that still freaks me out. It's like, why would you walk off a series when you've been handed two, se- you know, two seasons right off the bat? Doesn't make any sense to me. You know, something must be going on. I don't get it. But that's a whole other subject. Carol Ann Ford, by the way, remains keen on a TV return to Doctor Who. Now, in SFX Magazine, you know, she reiterated her interest in appearing as, of course, Susan in Doctor Who with Jodie Whittaker. She goes, now, oh, there's a thing. I've toyed with that. Oh, Grandpa, oh, Ma. I think Jodie is fantastic. It's a wonderful thing she's doing. She does it fabulously well. And how it's changed. We had to do what we did with Threepence but they had some really big budgets. It's amazing. Now, Ford, of course, promoting this new range, Susan's War, where, you know, if you'd been listening to Big Finish, um, she basically got recruited for the Time War in a, um, I believe it was one of the Companion Chronicles, something like that. It was one of the short trips, something along that line. And she goes right here, Peter Capaldi unsuccessfully lobbied to have Susan rejoin the 12th Doctor, but it was not to be. Ford even visited the TARDIS set in 2014 while Peter Capaldi was filming. Oh, bless him. Peter was batting for me the whole time. He desperately wanted us to do something together. I went up to Cardiff and he asked me, would you like to come and see the set? He said, and I said, of course, oh, yes. You know, wow, please. And we were dancing around the TARDIS set together and he was singing, I want you to come back. I want you to come back. So I started singing, I want to come back. I want to come back. Oh, she goes, oh my God, I'd love to work with him. He's so fun and talented. And of course, this just goes to show you, there's a lot of classic companions who wanted to come back. They've said this and repeatedly stated this, yet the BBC will not allow it to happen. Um, it, it's just sad to me because as I keep reminding people, the only classic companions who have returned on the main show are Sarah Jane Smith and K-9. Nobody else. That's it. Now, if you go to Sarah Jane Adventures, that's a whole nother you know, ball of wax. They were going to have basically everybody and their grandmother coming back over there. But it's, sadly, that all died with Elizabeth Sladen. All right, next up over here, Bo-ho-ho-ay! Dr. Who writer Russell T. Davies reveals the two star names he thinks should have replaced David Tennant. Now, what he means here is not replaced as in being the next Doctor's. But when you had that bit in the Stolen Earth, you know, where or Journey's End, whatever it was, where you had the fake regeneration, originally he had an idea that, you know, like these one of these two would pop up and temporarily be a doctor and then revert back to David Tennant. And the two names he brought up were Judy Dench and Ian McKellen. So it's not like it would have been like an extended thing. He goes, I'd have cast a whole new doctor just for one scene, he said, quote, Ian McKellen and Judy Dench had to run around the TARDIS and discover the hand and regenerate back. Imagine, why didn't I? But, you know, these are things, you know, as they say, you know, for, you know high insight is 2020. The Unsung Heroes of Doctor Who Phantom Events have announced a brand new lockdown project celebrating the Unsung Heroes of Doctor Who. Hosted by Alex Moore, this series of YouTube videos aims to tell the behind-the-scenes story of the members of the cast and crew whose perspective might normally go untold. And there's a whole list of people here that are going to appear in this. And I highly suggest you do listen to these or you know, watch them because you learn so much about how things differ between now, then, and even, you know, in the new series, things have changed quite a bit. Oh, gosh, compared to, like, back when they were doing, you know, Chris Eccleston and all that. And then even all the way back into the classic series, it was a whole different ball of wax all the time. Oh, goodness gracious, like a lot of people freak out when you tell them, oh, by the way, you do realize that back in the Hartnell era, they filmed everything as live, which means they ran entire scenes. They didn't do bit by bit like they do today. Kind of weird stuff, you know, kind of freaks you out. And then you wonder why, you know, they were going mad because, you know, you'd be running scenes forever, it seemed. All right, Black Eye 43, Robots of Death, latest release in the Black Archive series is out. Uh, this series from Averse Books explores in detail the making of the story. Of course, it was first shown in 1977. You can order this on Amazon. Here's a link right here to go look for it if you want. Uh, these are usually pretty informative, pretty good from what I've been told. So go check that out. All right, next up. Of course, here's a reminder. I've talked about this a bit. I think they'll be doing a, another lockdown, except Mark Geddes and Sasha Dewan. We'll be joining you for an adventure in space and time watch along on this Saturday. 
All right, so if you've not seen this article drifting around before, that'll be this Saturday, the 23rd of May, at 7 p.m. British time, so it'll be about 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you want to go you know, t t join along with them, and be sure to look for the hashtag London1963 if you want to participate in this particular watch-along. Um, incredible movie, incredible stuff, mm -mm, you know, good stuff. All right, Dave Bradley. And Doctor Who voice impressionists gather for Doctor's Assemble. Now, Doctor Who magazine writer Emily Cook, of course, who's been organizing the watch-alongs during the COVID-19 pandemic isolation period, has organized something special. And this you know, basically going to go along with the old project that we're going to see this, or with the lockdown this Saturday. And I think it's going to be like a little video you know, thing that like they've been doing. So go check this out. Here you go. Boom, boom, boom. Be sure, all right, it says right here, without any further details on exact time and place, our best guess is that Doctor's Assemble will likely appear on the Doctor Who Lockdown YouTube channel, there you go right there, after the 90-minute Adventure in Space and Time watch along on May 23rd, but likely 9.30 British Standard Time, which is about 4.30 Eastern Standard Time around there. So be sure to keep your eyes out for that. It's uh, There's a little, like, quote-unquote trailer thing here for it. So, sounds to me like just, a bunch of voices getting together for a thing. We don't know how long it's going to be or whatnot. Okay, new details from the production designer, and this goes along for Series 12. In the second part of an interview with SFX Magazine, David Schirmer, or it's David, or so it's basically pronounced like David, if I remember right, revealed new details about set building and location filming on Series 12. And I love checking this stuff out because it gives you an insight as to how they're doing you know, things behind the scenes. The, you know, like building a sets and all that, just to show you, you know, boom, 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 you know, how they do this. Like, check, here's one thing a lot of people noticed right off the bat, was in the haunting of Villa Diodati, this particular room has been reused a few times. <laughs> all right. And of course, upstairs hall and rooms of Villa Diodati were set builds at Rothlock and some other location stuff right there. So lots of nifty stuff going on. All right, next up, Peter K. Snub, why stand-up legend dubbed BBC Doctor Who appearance a real regret. The creature that they had him playing, for one, the Absorbaloff, was from the winning of a contest. They all were, you know, I think it was mainly like kids doing it. And I'm just going off the brain box here, okay? And if I remember right, the thing was supposed to be originally like 50 foot tall, blah, blah, blah. But the problem is, in my opinion, and this is my opinion, Love and Monsters was the worst episode of the new series at all. That's why I die laughing when people talk about how bad Series 11 was. Or when it's like, dude, Love and Monsters. And then Fear Her right in that same season. Don't tell me how bad Series 11 was because you're obviously you know, putting the previous series up on a pedestal without remembering this shit bag. Okay, I'm sorry. But after making a break into the science fiction world, the comedian was reportedly unhappy with his character and also that the episode was widely panned by fans. It's not your fault, Peter K. Okay, it's not your fault. You have to blame the writing and the showrunner and all that on this one. Okay, and, and then again, uh, so not at his fault at all. I'm not going to blame Peter K because guess what? It was widely panned by fans. Because I hate to say it, there's a lot of people out there who do love this episode. That's your opinion, and you can have it. Oh, well, folks, I'm getting out of here before I really start tripping over my tongue. I'm just filming this in a hurry because I want to get this out for the weekend because i got some stuff going on with Legend of the Traveling Tardis this weekend. So take care, everyone, please. I'll, you know, be careful out there. I had to start back to work this week. They got us some masks, gloves, and everything else. It's like, ugh. But still, there's people getting handed out left and right. Uh, it's just a weird just being back at work. Take care. Have a good one. See you on the flip side, kids. Good night.